Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Solar energy seems to be the leading area of research this week with solar trees and solar aircrafts while youngsters prove their enthusiasm at the first EduSat lecture and Google Science Fair. But before we get on to the details, let's take a look at the headlines. The tree powers solar trees to solve energy crisis. Catching them young. First EduSat lecture sees enthusiastic participation. India shines at Google Science Fair. Solar Impulse Technology of Future completes world tour. And in our In Focus segment today, we will celebrate the double spirit of environment as the world observes the Nature Conservation Day and International Tiger Day this July. Now the news in detail. Solar energy has been dubbed as the future worldwide. Now the efforts are concentrated on developing novel designs and technologies to harvest maximum solar energy. The most recent addition to the solar energy sector is the solar tree developed by the CSIR researchers. The solar tree is designed to maximize energy production utilizing minimum space. More in this report. With dwindling fossil fuel resources across the world, solar energy seems to be the most viable solution to address the increasing energy demands. But while solar energy has emerged as the sustainable alternative, effectively harnessing solar energy to meet the existing requirements requires robust designs and novel technologies. A new member in this line of advanced designs is the novel Solar Power Tree, a brainchild of the researchers of the CSIR, Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, West Bengal. The solar power tree, which was recently launched by the Union Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, in the capital, addresses the crucial issue of space crunch in solar installations. The solar power tree is an innovation for generating electricity by harnessing maximum solar energy in a limited space. As the name suggests, the solar power tree resembles a tree with branches at different tiers which can accommodate 30 photovoltaic panels. Compared to the conventional solar photovoltaic systems which requires much space for installation, the solar power tree with its vertical designs requires only 400 square feet of area to produce 5 kilowatt energy. This is the पांच किलोवाट पावर मान लीजिए ये ब्रिक्स देता है तो देती है तो इसमें पांच किलोवाट के लिए आपको जायगा का प्रोविजन है 400 से 500 स्क्वायर फीट अभी हम ले यहाँ चार स्क्वायर फीट उसका मतलब 100 भाग का एक भाग यानि जो वन परसेंट लैंड आई एम यूजिंग फॉर द सेम पावर दूसरा है ऊंचा में है बोल के ये थोड़ा all the panels जो है, panels सब pegoda जैसा bricks जैसा है, तो ऊपर में sprinkler चलाने से पूरा bricks जो है धू जाता है, इसलिए automatic cleaning का भी सुविधा है। सबसे बड़ा सुविधा है कि आप जमीन छोड़के आप बना सकते हैं, नदी किनारे आप लगा दो, आप रास्ता का side से high roads है, India में अभी thousands and thousands kilometer high roads है, आप high road का side में लगा सकते हो। Hence, a three kilowatt solar power tree can be easily squeezed on rooftops and highways and can power about five households. The novel design which can solve the space crunch can be used both in rural and urban areas and the cost of solar power tree is 5 lakh rupees. What is more, the vertical design comes with self-cleaning panels and can be easily installed in open agricultural lands and paddy fields keeping the landscape intact. The design has been developed under the leadership of Dr. S. N. Methi and is currently licensed to Messrs. Vibes Solar Solution India LLP, Kolkata. 
process is also underway to license the technology to five other companies to address the existing energy crisis. Set is a technology, an advanced technology developed by ISRO, and we have a dedicated satellite for science education and science communication. So, in that case, you see we have interactive terminals all across the country in remote locations. So, uh, these people, these, these young kids, students, they cannot directly uh, communicate uh, or interact with uh, an eminent scientist whom they might be would like to meet him or like to know about his life, they would be getting a pl platform through this uh, interactive network. In a proud moment for the entire nation, Indian students have displayed extraordinary performance at the Google Science Fair 2016, with 14-year-old Adwair Ramesh bagging the Google Community Impact Award, the first in Asia. Let us see more details about Adwair's project in this report. ISRO's Indian Regional Navigation and Satellite System is expected to revolutionize the entire navigation and GPRS scenario of the country, providing many valuable services to the citizens. How to leverage the power of IRNSS to aid the common man? This is the idea that has won 14-year-old Indian student the Community Impact Awards for the Asia region at the Google Science Fair 2016. Adwai Ramesh, class 10 student from Chennai, was awarded the Community Impact Award of the Google Science Fair 2016 for developing Fisherman Lifeline Terminal or the FELT, a mobile-based GPS system to aid fishermen at sea. The FELT application developed by Adwe uses the existing tools such as mobile phones, services of IRNSS and Android maps to provide location-based information and help fishermen to stay clear from invisible maritime boundary lines. The Community Impact Awards under Google Science Fair honor five projects from various regions that make a practical difference to the community by addressing an environmental, health or resources challenge. Other regional finalists from India include Shivam Singh, Shubham Nataraj, Seerat Kaur, Zongsu and Dilip Dasari, Siddharth Pulabatla, Shreyas Kapoor, Tejit Babari, Shriyank, Mansa Fatima, Ashwat Surya Narayanan, Tanmay Vadhera, 
Besides these, several other Indian origin students across the world are also among the regional finalists. After solar bikes and solar cars, it is time for solar aircrafts. Crossing oceans and continents, Solar Impulse 2, the solar aircraft vouching for cleaner technologies, has finally completed its first fuel-free flight around the world on 26th of July. Solar Impulse 2 touched down at Abu Dhabi after a historic 16-month voyage around the world to demonstrate the power of innovation and cleaner energy solutions. in yet another successful feat of solar energy. Solar Impulse 2 has become the world's first solar airplane to complete a fuel-free flight around the world. Crossing oceans and continents and even touching down India at Ahmedabad and Varanasi last March, Solar Impulse 2 finally landed at Abu Dhabi on 26 July. The aircraft popular as SI-2, which took off from Abu Dhabi on March 9, 2015, landed after a long, arduous voyage that lasted 16 months. During its epic journey, the solar-powered aircraft has covered 40,000 kilometers around the globe and nearly 500 hours of flying. We have flown one after the other in the cockpit with André. 40,000 kilometers without fuel. And now the demonstration is done. It means that the rest of the world has to take it further, has to use these technologies. We have to stop listening to people who are afraid of changes their way of thinking. Solutions exist, they are profitable. Flying SI2 has been regarded as a human and technological challenge and the credit goes to Swiss explorers Bertrand Picard and André Boschberg, the founders and pilots who took turns piloting SI2. SI2 with the duo pilot team was on a world tour mission to prove that flying is possible without using fossil fuel. SI-2 has a wingspan bigger than that of a Boeing 747, touching about 72 meters, but weighs like a family car that is approximately equal to 2300 kgs. These wings are fitted with over 17,000 solar cells, which use only sunlight to power the engines. As for now, the aircraft can fly at the same speed like that of a car between 36 km per hour and 140 km per hour. The aircraft is the result of 12 years of feasibility study, concept, design and construction involving 50 engineers and technicians, 80 technological partners and more than 100 advisors and suppliers. Over its entire mission, Solar Impulse 2 cruised at altitudes of up to 9,000 meters and had 16 stopovers along the way, including Oman, India, Myanmar, China, Japan, the United States, Spain and Egypt. The success of Solar Impulse 2 is expected to provide the required thrust to research on clean technologies and renewable forms of energy. as a Krida is sustainable, our country's food security is sustainable. If flood comes, drought comes, any eventuality happens, everybody has something in their hand. But the farming community is the most suffering. 
seen the farmers' experiences with the poor farmers' villages, then made me to attempt to give best out of this rain-fed agriculture, best out to the country in the in the whole. What you recall with Dr. Cherukumali Srinivasa Rao, Director, Krida, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shurai, and you're watching Constitutionally Yours. Jammu and Kashmir is and continues to be an integral part of India. The basis was to give a limited power to government in India to govern us and the rest of the power was to be retained. We have an issue here uh, why Kashmir has 46 constituencies and Jammu and Ladakh only 41. 370 peculiar position for the application of Indian constitution to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Join us as we try to understand contemporary issues related to the Constitution. Watch Constitutionally Yours on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. India's Ministry of Earth Sciences, established in 2006, celebrated its 10th anniversary and Foundation Day on 27th July. The occasion which was celebrated at Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi saw the release of the Ministry's vision and strategy document for next 15 years by the Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Harsh Vardhan, and presentation of national awards for excellent scientific work and certificate of merit to distinguished scientists, young scientists and school children. In a rare archaeological discovery, Dr. Hari Raj Singh, a farmer from Bijnor, has stumbled upon ancient artifacts while digging a trench in his farm. The artifacts, which include several copper utensils, plates and ploughs, are approximately 4,500 years old. The artifacts, which are believed to be from the Indus Valley Civilization, are being examined by the researchers of the Archaeological Survey of India. In many of our episodes, we have focused on the environmental crisis the world faces today and how the world is fast losing out on its rich biodiversity owing to thoughtless human actions. While we directly or indirectly degrade our natural environment, seldom do we realize that the very survival of human species depends on it. Reminding us of our responsibilities towards environment are two special observances at this July, the World Nature Conservation Day on 28th of July and the International Tiger Day celebrated on 29th of July. Now, celebrating the spirit of these occasions, our In Focus segment today will probe the intricate ties that bind environment and life forms and how these are crucial for human existence. Earth, the only planet known to harbour millions of life forms. Each species remarkably unique in its own aspects. Earth is estimated to be 4.5 billion years old and the natural resources it is endowed with may be a few more billion years late. Civilization as we know it today is comparatively very new, having come into existence only 6,000 years ago. But what is shocking is that within a short span of 6,000 years, reckless human activities have destructed the planet more than all other species compared together. While we have over-exploited all the available natural resources, ranging from forest covers and water resources to the once abundant fossil fuel reserves, 
result being today the world is in the middle of an environment crisis that calls for urgent and efficient conservation measures. The month of July is unique in terms of environment protection. While 28th July each year is celebrated as the World Nature Conservation Day, 29th July marks the International Tiger Day. The two observations stresses on the need of conserving natural resources in the process of achieving sustainable development and highlights that wild tigers are an integral part of the ecological balance. Tigers, the largest cat species, have fascinated humankind since earliest. Tigers belong to the Felidae or family of cats. While the domestic cats belong to a subfamily of Phalaenae, tigers, along with other larger animals like lions, jaguars, and leopards, belongs to the subfamily Pantherinae. These solitary animals are known for their predating abilities and thick reddish coats with black, brown, or grey stripes. In the early 1900s, there were around 1 lakh tigers throughout the world in a variety of habitats from tropical forests, evergreen forests, woodlands and mangrove swamps to grasslands and savannas. But over the years, man has encroached forests and grasslands, cutting down trees for agriculture and other purposes. This has created a loss of habitat, not only for tigers, but also for many other smaller organisms on which these larger animals prey. While smaller animals die out easily due to habitat loss, larger predators like tigers face starvation. The ones which venture out into human settlements in search of food are often killed. Added to this is the menace of poaching. While tigers with striped tiger skin in huge demand in international black market and many unscientific beliefs that various tiger parts have medicinal properties, tigers are hunted down in large numbers. The result is we have only 3,000 tigers alive in the world today. According to an alarming statistics, the world has lost 97% of its tigers and at this rate, it is estimated that tigers could be extinct in another 5 years. Let us imagine a scenario when tigers are completely extinct. With one of the largest apex predator in the ecosystems gone, a crucial link in food chain will be broken and a ripple of change will spread through the remaining forests and grasslands. This scenario indeed is alarming and indicates how the world ecosystem is the result of interplay between all the living and non-living links of nature. This is also what the World Nature Conservation and the International Tiger Day stresses upon. A healthy environment is the foundation for a stable and productive society. And to ensure the well-being of present and future generations, we all must participate to protect, conserve and sustainably manage our natural resources. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at vigyanprasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. That is all for today. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned to Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Thanks for watching.